The Schmidt decomposition is a way to represent a quantum state in a form that allows us to identify if parts of a system that is represented by this quantum state are entangled or separable. And if they are entangled, it shows us how the two systems are correlated with each other very clearly. Furthermore, once we represent a state in a Schmidt decomposition, we can construct measures of entanglement to also quantify the degree or the level of entanglement between the different parts. So for example, if we have the state zeta and we're represented in a Schmidt decomposition, we will be able to tell if A and B are entangled and how is it that outcomes of the two systems are correlated with each other. So what I want to do in this video is do a general overview of what the Schmidt decomposition is with some examples. And then in the next video, we'll go over the derivation on how to arrive to this type of decomposition for a state. So let's start by looking at what is the simplest possible scenario, which is when we have a bipartite state for a two qubit system, where each of the qubits is represented in the computational basis. So zero and one for subsystem A and zero and one for subsystem B. And we know that any state composed by two qubits can always be expressed in the following form. So all we have here is a linear combination of the tensor product of all the basis states of subsystem A with the basis states of subsystem B, and then they're pre-multiplied by this coefficients CJI, where the CJIs are uh, complex numbers. And obviously the sum of the norm square of each of these coefficients has to sum up to one so that the state is properly normalized. Now this exact same state can be represented in the Schmidt decomposition in the following way. So we can represent theta now as lambda zero of u zero tensored v zero plus lambda one u1 tensored v1. And this u0, u1 are for subsystem A, and this v0, v1 are for subsystem B. Now, there are clearly some differences between what we have here for the Schmidt decomposition and the representation we have above. So first, we can notice that unlike the first representation where we have a total of four terms, all the combinations of the basis states of A and B. Here we only have two summation terms. And secondly, uh, this U0, U1, and V0, U1 are not necessarily the basis states that we used to represent uh, the state originally. So what are these terms? So this U sub case and V sub case are still orthonormal states in the corresponding spaces of subsystem A and subsystem B. So even though they're not the computational basis states, they're still orthonormal. And this lambda subcase are what are known as the Schmidt coefficients. And unlike the coefficients C, J, I that we had above, this lambda subcase are always positive. So they're greater or equal than zero. But what does this Schmidt decomposition tell us about the state that we didn't know before when we represented in the other way? Well, probably the best way to get a better understanding is by looking at an example. So, you know, in the previous video, we looked at the equal superposition state. So one half zero zero plus one half zero one plus one half one zero plus one half one one, right? And this first qubit was for system A and the second one for system B. And clearly this state is already represented in the form we had here above, where we have all possible combination of basis states, right? And, and we said, well, you know, if we, we, you know, by inspection, try to factorize this state, we know that this can be expressed also as one over root two of zero plus one tensored one over root two 0 plus 1, and this was for system A, and this was for system B, which is equivalent to the state plus tensor plus. 
and we didn't mention this before but this right here is the Schmidt decomposition of this same state here so what we have here is now instead of the sum of four states we have a single term now you might say well here in the Schmidt decomposition we had two terms right well yes but this is the same as also having plus the state minus tensor minus where the lambda one is just equal to zero right and here the lambda zero is equal to one so this this representation is already in the schmidt decomposition and as we mentioned in the previous video what this allows us to see is that if we end up with only one term then we know for sure that the state is separable if we would have ended up with more terms then we would say the state is entangled so that brings us to the next very important concept which is known as the schmidt number the schmidt number which is the total number of schmidt coefficients so total number of lambda sub k's that are different than zero and to some extent that gives us an, an idea of how the two systems are entangled right so if we only have one schmidt coefficient that is not equal to zero then we can say the state is separable if we have two or more lambda sub k's that are not equal to zero then the state is entangled but then as we have more and more uh, lambda sub k's we can see how different parts of the two systems correlate with each other or are entangled with each other so to see that a little bit more clearly let's take a look at a second example right so where we had the same status here above but instead of having all the terms with a plus sign we turn this last one to a minus and in the last video we also showed that if we factorize this we end up with the state one over root two zero tensor plus plus one over root two one tensor minus and again we didn't mention this before but this is the schmidt decomposition of this state and here we can see now that um, we have two terms instead of four as we had before and what's critical here is that we can now see how these two systems a and b are correlated with each other or entangled with each other Right? Before we had these four terms, which made it kind of hard to know if, let's say, we measure you know, state zero in subsystem A, what we're going to measure in subsystem B. Now, in this representation, we know for a fact that every time we measure a zero in A, we will always measure the state plus in subsystem B. And you know, we can see this in a different way, and is that once we represent something in its mid decomposition, we can always apply some local unitary or some local gates that would transform the state back to the basis that would allow us to see the entanglement of the system a little bit more clearly. So in this particular case, if we apply just an identity to A and then a Halamar gate to B, right? So identity to A to leave it alone, Halamar to B to move it from the Halamar basis to the computational basis, then we're going to get the state 1 over root 2, 0, 0, plus 1 over root 2, 1, 1, which is a, a Bell state, right? So the Schmidt decomposition allowed us to, to see more clearly how the system is entangled. Uh, whereas before, when we represented in this way, it was not as clear. Now, so far, we've only looked at the simplest case, which is when we have a two qubit system. But this concept of the Schmidt decomposition can be generalized for when A and B are not necessarily just uh, two level systems, they can be multi level systems, or when A and B have more than just one qubit. So, uh, for that particular case, we just need to use this general expression, which is very similar to what we looked into before. We just need to use this general basis states for a psi sub i uh, where you know in the case of qubits we have a total of uh, 2 to the n elements where n is the total number of qubits in a and then for system b we have this 
phi sub j's, where the total number of elements now will be 2 to the m, where this m is the number of qubits in system b, which obviously doesn't have to match that of system a. And then the expression is the same as what we had before. It's a linear combination of all the tensor products of the basis states of each of the two systems multiplied by this complex coefficient c sub i j. Now, the Schmidt decomposition for such state is given by this more general expression in which, again, we have our u sub k of a and v sub k of b, which, again, are sets of orthonormal states in their corresponding spaces, a and b. And the lambda sub k's are the Schmidt coefficients. Now, similar to what we saw before, where in the case of a two qubit system, in this representation, we had a total of four summation terms. And in the Schmidt representation, we only had two terms. Here we can see that we have reduced the, the summation terms from two sums for i and j to only one sum for this index k. And the total number of terms that we're going to have, which is given by this d, is given by the minimum of the total number of states in a, here n, and the total number of states in b, m. Now, we should not confuse this d with the Schmidt number that we discussed previously. This is the total number of terms in this sum, but some of this lambda sub case could still be zero. So the, the Schmidt number, so the Schmidt number, which is the number of um, lambda sub case different than zero, is bounded by this d. So it could be, you know, equal to d, but it could also be smaller than d, and it has always to be uh, greater or equal than one. So if our state is separable, we could end up with just one lambda sub k in our Schmidt decomposition, but we can end up with at most d components, which is, you know, given by whichever is the, the smallest number between the size of uh, subsystem A and subsystem B. So let's take a look at a couple more examples for systems that have more than just one qubit. So an interesting one is when we have uh, a W state. So a W state is a, actually a tripartite entangled state. So it's given by one over root three, zero, zero, one plus zero, one, zero plus one, zero, zero. But there are instances in which it's interesting to analyze this as a bipartite state. So we group the state in the form, let's call it W, A, B, as uh, root of one over three of zero, zero, A, one for B, plus zero, one, A, zero for B, and one, zero for A, and zero for B. So here we see that, you know, for uh, the basis for system A is now the states 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So it's a two qubit system. And the basis for B is just uh, 0 and 1, right? So system A is a two qubit system, system B is a one qubit system. And we want to find the Schmidt decomposition for this state. Now, again, I mentioned this before, here we're just doing the factorization by inspection. The Schmidt decomposition can actually be found by using what is known as the singular value decomposition. So there's an algorithm behind the factorization that gives us the, the right components. But since we're first working with simple states, we're gonna do it just by inspection. And you know, for this one, it's fairly easy. We can see that this uh, WAB state can be factorized as one over root three of zero, zero. Let's actually use color for A and one for B plus. And here we can now factorize the, the zero for B. So we have zero, one, A plus one, zero, A, and then tensored with zero for B. And then here, if we want to make sure that all the states in, in this uh, summation are normalized, what we can do is, well, for the first one, we just get 
one, root of one over three, zero, zero, tensor one. And then here we can notice that this state here to be normalized, we need a one over root two for each of these two components. So we do one over root two of zero, one plus one over root two, one, zero, tensor zero. And again, this is A and this is B. And this obviously here needs a prefactor of square root of two over three, so that when we multiply with these two terms of one over root two, we get the one over root three term we had before. And again, this is our Schmidt decomposition. We see here that we have something equivalent to, you know, some lambda zero u zero for a tensored v zero for b plus some lambda one u1 tensored v1, right? So this zero zero is our u zero, this one is our v zero, this one over root two zero one plus one over root two one zero is our u one, and this zero is our v one. And this correspond to our lambdas. And as you can see, this zero zero term is orthonormal to this uh, state one over root two zero one plus one over root two one zero. If we perform the inner product, we get zero. So we can actually form a basis uh, also composed by the state one one and one over root two zero one minus one over root two one zero uh, in in the space of A. So now, what's so special about this decomposition? Well, now here we can clearly see how these two systems are entangled with each other. If we measure one in B, we always get zero, zero in A. And we measure zero in B, we always get this superposition of one over root two, zero, one, plus one over root two, one, zero. So actually writing the state in this form tell us that we could use the qubit in subsystem B to check if, for example, the state on A is still in a superposition or not. So if we perform a measurement in B and we get a zero, we know that A is still entangled. If we measure a one, we know the state in A is no longer entangled. So writing things in the Schmidt decomposition can be beneficial um, just to analyze things this way. Now let's take a look at one final example that allows us to see why representing things in the Schmidt decomposition can be very beneficial. So let's say we have the state zeta, and as you can see, you know, this is a four qubit state uh, and let's say that the first two qubits correspond to system a the second two qubits to system b and you know we can really say much about the state just by looking at it we can tell if it's entangled if it's separable and if it is entangled how the two systems are entangled but if we now represent this and it's schmidt decomposition so here i'm just using a function i created uh, where i'm passing this state and uh, the qubits that correspond to uh, one of the two subsystems. And then I'm just going to print this in a, a Schmidt form. And if we see here, now this state represented in this decomposition clearly shows that we have for subsystem B uh, states 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. And for system A, we just have bell states. And then these prefactors, which are our Schmidt numbers, tell us what is the probability of measuring each of these three components. So this is a very nice way to represent things because we, we can see that the probability of finding the state in state zero zero and in the Bell state uh, one over root two zero zero plus one one is much higher than for example, finding it in the state one over root two zero one plus one zero and state zero one, right? And then the same here, this probability of finding it um, in this combination of states, um, it's much lower. So the Schmidt decomposition basically showed us that these two states are entangled in this way where we have these correlations between these two different ways of looking at system A and system B with this probability amplitudes associated with each one of them. 
uh, or you know said in another way we we mentioned this before we could do some local unitary transformation to in this case subsystem a to turn it into the computational basis right so here we can see we have uh, bell states so if we now take a circuit that performs this local operation on system A and leave system B alone. And if we now evolve our state through that circuit, all that's gonna do is just convert uh, the state on system A to um, the computational basis. And here I'm not representing it in the Schmidt decomposition anymore, uh, but here we can now clearly see uh, a much cleaner uh, representation where uh, now we can see that the, the probability of finding the state 0, 0, 0, 0 is higher than finding, for example, 0, 1, 0, 1, or 1, 1, 1, 0. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And in the next video, we'll go over the details on how do we derive the Schmidt decomposition in general. So basically, it will be what is inside this function that is taking a state and is returning the Schmidt coefficients and the Schmidt vectors for subsystem A and subsystem B.